Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part eight of my working, walking Star Wars gonk droid. Last time I got all of the electronics hooked up and I got the legs and all of the joints working so I can send data to them and we can make them move to the position that we want them to which is really good so it looks very much like the joints and the mechanical design is strong enough so it can push up its whole weight on one leg so there's a little bit of footage at the end of last time about that and we also have dynamic stability back to front so it can tip its body to try and balance itself. So this time we're going to get dynamic stability working sideways and we're also going to try and get it to walk on the spot by taking one foot off the ground at a time but not building up momentum and tipping over which is what it does now. I've had to make one small change to the serial setup so I've got an Arduino Mega which is its main brain dealing with stability and timing and that's sending serial data to the four Pro Minis. Basically what it's doing is sending an identifier with a value. Each one of these is running two PID controllers so it's taking two PID values for two joints and then positioning the joints. So this is sending a letter A, B, C or D with two values. They all read it and basically if it's for A then A acts on it and the others ignore it. And that seems all well and good. These are running at 100 hertz each so they're reading 100 times a second. This is only sending at 50 times a second. So that all seemed fine. So what would have happened was I'd send an A, two values, let's just say 100, 100 for the two joints, another A and then when the A Pro Mini receives it, it moves those to position 100. And that seemed great. Um, obviously what I've realised is though, when all the joints move at once, in fact it's going to be sending all four of them. So it's going to be sending four pieces of data on each cycle at 50 times a second. Um, and the challenge is of course the Pro Minis read 100 times a second, but they can only read one piece of data on each cycle. So they're not going to have time to read all four of them unless I increase that to 200 hertz or I decrease the speed of the Mega which is dealing with the balancing down to less than 50 hertz. So what I've instead decided to do is in fact send the data all at once. So I'm going to send one identifier then I'm going to send eight pieces of data and the identifier again and I'll send that once on each cycle and then the Arduino Pro Minis will read in all of it the first one will pick out the first two variables, the next one will pick out the next two, C will pick out those, and then Pro Mini D will pick out the last two. So then it only has to do one write on each loop on the Mega and one read reading them in. So now on my main loop moving those leg joints, I've commented out all of the serial writing I had and I'm just updating the variables. So this is the timers and everything. This is updating the positions to 50 and then half a second later doing it back to zero. And this is the same for the other leg. It's updating variables called D1 and D2 and that's B1 and B2. And then down at the bottom, I'm writing them all out in one go. So this happens once per loop on the mega at 50 times a second writes them all out and encapsulates them with the identifier A. Then on the actual minis, they all look for the A this time instead of looking for A, B, C or D. They all read in all the variables. This one is B, so it's only using the variables three and four. And if I switch over here to the D, that one is using the variables seven and eight. And they only have to read one lot of data then on each cycle. This also means that I can increase the mega up to more than 50 hertz if I want. In fact, I can go up to 100 hertz before there's more data than the minis can read. So everything still seems to be working after the code change. If I push this, it still balances. And if I pump the legs, then they still work. But what we don't have is the side to side hips and ankles working. So that's the next thing to get going. I've implemented four new PID controllers. The first two, of course, are for the front to back stability for the servo and the stability, which I described last time. Now, remember the Pro Minis are running the servo PID for the side to side axis. So all I need is four stability PIDs running on the Mega. And the reason there's one for each joint is that I'm gonna eventually drive them with different set points so I can keep the spacing of the legs different. Also, the ankles will need to react differently to the hips. So I've got four PID controllers which are called uh, PID Side 1, Side 2, Side 3 and Side 4. 
This is the actual code that makes the pitch controller run, so all of their set points are zero, so it tries to stay upright, and the uh, inputs to those are the IMU in the other axis, in the y-axis. I then compute them and update the variables, and you'll notice two of them are multiplied by minus one. They all swing around zero, but I need to reverse the ankles, essentially, so the hips and ankles stay parallel, one moves positive and one moves negative. So now, if I move this one way, the legs move the other way, and the same that way, so it pretty much means the pit is working and you should be able to see those ankles moving as well and staying parallel with the ground. So, if I put this down now, oh. Now, if it oscillates wildly, it probably means the pit controller's um, tuned up the wrong way round and the joints are reacting in the wrong direction. So I better hit that motor enable and turn them round. Right, I've reversed a few things and tuned a few things up. So now when I move it, the legs do this. And if I hit the buttons on here, and I'm just going to hold on to it because it's not really tuned up properly, we should find... It looks like it's doing what it should do, and we can hear a snapping sound there. And we'll look at that right now. I'm printing some new tracks for the ankles with an additional feature on them, and they're also a bit tighter. Well, I didn't make those parts quite the right shape, so I've cut a piece out of them there. Obviously, this line went down, and that meant this wouldn't fit around the foot when it moves. But these are replacements for here, and the clicking sound you can hear is the gears popping out, because these are quite bendy. So now I've got these reinforcing webs in them, so hopefully that should be a lot stronger. After several hours tuning, I've now implemented timed steps. So if I press this button on the remote, it will take a step every half second, which is essentially another state machine triggering the other ones that uh, bend and straighten the legs. So the first step is a bit dodgy, so I need to sort of dampen it to start with. But once it's going, I should be able to let go, and it should stand there walking on the spot, which is pretty much what I wanted it to do. So I'm pretty happy with the way that works. It seems to wander backwards. But it is just about taking his feet off the ground on every step, so we need a bit more tune-up. But actually that's working pretty well so far for first go. You may have noticed that the robot looks a bit heavy on its left-hand side there in that first bit of footage. And uh, I've basically implemented this control here which is a trim control for left to right uprightness and that's just being read into an analog in on the mega and it's adding a tiny amount of that value to the IMU so that I can center it so obviously for my body front to back I've still got this control on the remote but I don't have one for side to side so I decided to add one where I can just put it upright and set it so I think actually what's happening as well is the steps are too quick and it's not being allowed to center before it takes another step so sometimes it gets stuck on one side, so I need to look at all the timings and perhaps actually make that timing dynamic as well based on the IMU. So if it overbalances slightly to one side, it's longer before it takes the next step. You'll also notice it's a bit twitchy, front to back here particularly, and also side to side if I shove it, oscillates for a bit before it settles. So I probably need to tune down the gain on my PID controllers because they're pretty tight at the moment. My code for this is pretty simple so far. I showed you last time the code that triggers the left and right steps, which is now here. So if I press a button on the remote, it would trigger the left step here. And this is just time is expiring, looking at the previous left millis and checking if it's bigger than a thing called left time, which is declared at the top. Same for the right step. So it takes the step half a second later. Well, it moves those to the position 50, half a second later it moves it back to zero, so it's basically bending each leg, same for the right. Now what I'm doing is this block of code, which is basically timing the time between steps. So if I press a button and my step flag is zero, sets the step flag to one, if it's one, it then goes and triggers the left hand leg. So it sets that left flag to one, which triggers the code down here for the left leg. 
then waits an amount of time, the step time, and then it basically triggers the right one. When it gets back to the beginning, it sets it back to zero, and I've actually got a delay here before it sets it to zero, so that if I keep holding the button, it basically has that delay before it takes the first step again. My step times and left and right times are defined up here with these, so we've got uh, 500 milliseconds for each one, so bending and straightening the legs of both 500 milliseconds and the time between steps is 500 milliseconds. So first of all I'm going to increase those, then I'm going to make the time between steps be dynamic based on its stability. I've increased all three timers to 600 milliseconds for 500, so only a tenth of a second more. And of course, between steps, it still needs time to bend and straighten the legs, so they all have to really be, at least the time between steps needs to be at least as big as the time it takes to bend each leg and straighten it. So I'm just going to uh, enable the motors, and we'll set this off and see what it does. Well, it feels slower. Okay, well, it's... Kind of working, but whoa, it's getting stuck on one side quite a bit there. Okay, well, meh. not too bad. Whoops, that was one of the ankles. Oh, and it's stuck. Hmm. So this is a, a decrease in the time, and this is down to 400 milliseconds for all those timers. So actually, that looks pretty stable. I think it's pretty much staying in the centre well, apart from wandering backwards still. But uh, that looks pretty good to me. I've now taken a bit of the IMU side to side and added that to the timers. So basically now if it tips over too far, it waits a bit before it comes back. So it's only adding, it's not taking any time away and I'm using the 400 millisecond timer as a base. So let's see what that does. All right, so that's probably too long. Oh yeah, it is working though, because it's now tipping over. Oh. Yeah, okay, so that's, we need to shorten that. I've now reduced that by a factor of about two to three, so it's two times, two to three times less time getting added from the IMU to each cycle. So let's see what that does. Actually, that was very much easier to start off. You notice I only had to hold it for a little bit, and it looked like it was right on balance all of a sudden. Um, in the end, it's going to need to be to start and stop by itself, so I think I'm along the right lines there of what to do. Just stop that before it hits the table and do it again. So, uh, yeah, I probably need an extra large amount on the first step to uh, just compensate for that first step, but it's much better than it was without the dynamic timing. So this is still 400 milliseconds with a factor of the IMU added to each step time and the bending and straightening of the leg. So that seems to work pretty well. Obviously the battery goes flat while I'm doing this, I've just put a freshly charged battery in, there's almost another volt higher than the one that was in there. And now it seems quite a lot happier and it doesn't wander away as much, it's almost staying on the spot, it's walking backwards slightly, but it's not wandering that way anymore. So I think that's pretty much it. What you will have noticed though is that the timing looks slower and that's because the battery is charged more so it's throwing itself over more, the legs are bending faster because the motors are running faster and then of course the dynamic timing is kicking in saying well I'm leaning too far so make all those steps slower. So actually with a charged battery it moves slower and with a flat one it moves faster. So I guess I could monitor the battery with an analog in somewhere in a potential divider and then factor that in to try and change the time again. But I guess that's something for the future. All I've done in the code there is taken the left time, the right time and the step time and I've added on a little bit of the IMU to each one. When it wasn't working properly I had that set to 3 and now it's set to 8 so it's dividing the IMU by a bigger number making a smaller amount of time. So I've just tried um, actually adding on only 380 milliseconds up here instead of 400 to now take account of the charged battery so let's see what that does. Yep, so now we're back to it working pretty well. Faster steps, as you can see, with the charged battery. Um, an easy start and so on. Seems pretty good. So obviously I'm going to need to play with this as I go, because in fact, as it needs to walk along, it's going to need time to actually take each step, and that's going to affect the dynamics quite a bit. 
I thought I'd try a little experiment here and take basically the IMU value and take that away from the set points for each ankle and hip. And the result of um, adding these and uh, subtracting them here is the feet will stay parallel with the ground, but the hips will get wider. So the actual sort of distance between the legs will open up as it goes off balance. Now, uh, putting the IMU straight into the set point here probably isn't the best way to do it. I should probably have another PID controller feeding it somewhere, but it's just a basic experiment to see what happens and see if that makes it even more stable. So now if I pick this up, we should be able to see as I take it off balance, its legs, as well as moving over, the feet actually get further apart. So hopefully you can see that just there and there. There we go, and the other way as well. Right, so let's see if that helps. And of course, uh, if it goes off balance, the feet get further apart and the step gets slower because we've still got the dynamic timing. Well, it seems like it doesn't want to wander off as much. It's got a bit of a rotation to it now. It's still going backwards slightly. And may have fixed some other issues in keeping it on the spot. Well, oh, there's still a bit of a side step. But uh, actually, that's not too bad now. What I suspect is happening with it wandering off is that the feet aren't both parallel with the ground or they're slightly offset or the hips are slightly offset. Um, basically the joints don't all match at their zero position. It's got a slight bias to one side that's making it be pushed along one way. So I need to try and find out what that is. And I think when I found out what it is, then it'd be quite good to have another trim control so I can adjust that. So I can keep adjusting it to keeping it in the middle so it doesn't wander off basically. I probably should have put more analog controls on my remote and I probably could still go back and do that and just stick some extra data in the stream so that I've got some trim controls on here that I can adjust rather than being attached to the robot so I can adjust it when it's in motion without trying to chase the control which will be really hard to do. So that's actually all I'm going to do this time. Next time we're going to try and get it walking forwards at least and we're going to try and sort out that wandering issue. That's going to be quite a lot more tinkering because basically I actually need to drive the sideways joints to some positions in my sequence um, as well as letting the dynamics from the dynamic stability alter them because at the moment obviously those steps are really really quick and that's just because of the dynamics of the system because of its size and its mass. So to actually get it to take proper longer steps I'm going to need to bias those and then let the stability be transposed on top of that to keep it stable so there's quite a lot more work to do on that. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more updates on this project and other projects and also check out my Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash xrobots where you can get access to some exclusive rewards including all my videos early and a live broadcast with me. Alright that's all for now.